It's time to take apart the Sony Xperia Pro I. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to use a hair dryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. The back plate is made of glass. The glass camera lens covers can be removed by applying heat and gently prying them off. On the back side, there's a secondary microphone. Once the back plate's removed, we can see an adhesive pad over the battery, which adheres the back plate to the back of the phone, in addition to the adhesive that's around the frame. Now the NFC antenna needs to be lifted up, which will reveal additional screws underneath. There are 13 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. In addition to the NFC antenna, there are numerous antenna lines which are these light gray colored lines drawn on top of the plastic cover. On the back side, we can see the flex cable for the NFC antenna which has the connector points which touch the points on the motherboard to give it signal. There's also a liquid damage indicator which is this white sticker on the side. Now the bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There are more antenna lines drawn on the plastic housing of the speaker assembly as well as some graphene film on the front and the back which help transfer heat. And there are the white foam balls underneath the red tape. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect that first. There is an adhesive pull tab next to the battery cable to help pry the battery off. But to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to apply some isopropyl alcohol to the sides of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Now the black plastic cover covering the flex cable for the additional microphone needs to be popped off. And then the flex cable can be peeled off. Now the flex cable on the bottom right can be disconnected. At this point we can lift up and remove the plastic cover bordering the cameras. On this plastic piece, the 3 d ITOF sensor is located in the center, and TOF stands for time of flight. And here's a look at the back. The flex cable extension can be disconnected by just popping it off the main board. Now the flex cable for the headphone jack can be disconnected. Here's a better look at that. There's a small piece of copper tape covering the flex cable connector for the LED light on the back as well as the ambient light sensor. Once that's lifted up, the flex cable can be disconnected. Now that the flex cable is disconnected, the plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. Once that's removed, we can disconnect the flex cable for the front facing camera and remove that. There's some adhesive underneath the top speaker or earpiece speaker, so it needs to be gently lifted up and pried off. Here's a better look at that. Now we can disconnect this flex cable by just popping it off, as well as the flex cable for the fingerprint reader and power button, as well as the volume keys. On the bottom portion of the phone, there are three more Phillips screws which need to be removed. The white coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off the subboard. Now the flex cable can be disconnected from the subboard. Once those are disconnected, the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located on the front, and here's a look at the back. The flex cable for the linear haptic feedback motor or vibration motor can be lifted up and popped off.
There is yet another plastic cover which needs to be removed. Once that's removed, we have access to the screen cable. There are two adhesive strips on either side of the screen cable, so we're going to have to gently pry that off once we're disconnecting it. Underneath these black circle stickers, there are screws. In total, there are nine Phillips screws which need to be removed. So finally, once those are removed, we can lift up and remove the main board. Are you ready? Wow, this thing is really complex. All right, so we need to start off by disconnecting the coaxial cables. There are four more Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up this cover. Now we can disconnect the charger port. This flex cable. And the camera cables. Here's a better look at that charger port, which has a rubber gasket around it. As far as the camera go, there's a 16mm, 24mm, and a 50mm lens. So back to the main board, there's a proximity sensor located on top, and a notification LED to the right side of it. There's also some copper tape on the shield and some graphite film on this one. Here's a better look at the RAM and processor and the rest of the chips with the shields removed. And just a note, there is no thermal paste or thermal pads or anything like that to help transfer heat. So I'm assuming they're relying on the aluminum portions of the frame itself to help transfer heat. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to take the back cover off and then remove the screws on the bottom and then remove the speaker assembly, as well as the screws holding down the subboard and remove that. You'd also have to remove the vibrator motor and you would have to also remove the additional plastic cover which is covering the flex cable for the screen, and then you would have to disconnect the screen cable. At that point, you would have to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reassemble your new screen, making sure you run the cable back through the opening in the mid-frame, and reassemble your phone. Doing a charger port replacement or replacing any of the cameras would be even more difficult since you'd have to take the entire motherboard off. The flex cable for the volume keys, power button, and fingerprint reader is right here, as well as the flex cable over here for the buttons on the side, so if you needed to replace those, there are three Phillips screws on the side which need to be removed and then that cover would come off, giving you access to removing those buttons. As far as repairability goes, I give this phone a 3 out of 10. It's a much longer process to take this phone apart and replacing most of the parts require you to take the entire motherboard out. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.